Welcome to the video on doing order of magnitude calculations, also called Fermi questions. Uh, doing order of magnitude calculations or Fermi questions really is just a combination of dimensional analysis combined with the concept of order of magnitude. And uh, Enrico Fermi became kind of known for coming up with these very obscure questions just to prove that you could get the answer using powers of 10 very quickly. And so I'm going to model that for you here, and there's probably no better way to model that than actually to do some of the questions here with you. And um, so we're going to, I'm going to do numbers one and two with you here, and then uh, we'll do the rest of them in class. All right, so let's get started here. Uh, let's read number one. How much space in cubic miles would be required to fit the entire population of the Earth, assuming that no space is wasted. So we want to fit the entire population of the Earth into whatever space in cubic miles that would be. So we need to take people and convert them to cubic miles. So let's start with people. How many people on the Earth? Well, last time I checked, um, there was over 7 billion people on the earth. 7 billion would be 7 times 10 to the 9. And so we need to determine 7 billion people's order of magnitude. And so that would be between 10 to the 9th and 10 to the 10th. Well, clearly 7 is greater than a 5.5 halfway cutoff point. So the order of magnitude for the population of the earth is 10 billion, I'm sorry, uh, 10 to the 10th billion people. Or just 10 to the 10th people, sorry. So we're going to start off with 10 to the 10th people on the earth. And we're going to convert people to cubic miles. Okay? Well, how much volume does one person take up? Or one people, we'll just call it a person. Well, we would probably express that answer in cubic feet. And off to the side here, we would say, okay, um, the average person is 5.5 feet or higher. And would be closer to one foot wide than 10 feet wide, so by one, and would be closer to one foot deep than 10 feet, so say by one foot. And so we end up with a person that's 5.5 cubic feet, and that lies between 10 to the zero, which is one, and 10 to the 1, which is 10. And so we would say the order of magnitude on the volume of one person in cubic feet would be 10 to the 1. So we go ahead and we substitute in 10 to the 1 cubic feet of volume per person. All right, that cancels the people unit. Now we're going to convert feet to miles. That means feet has to go in the denominator. Miles has to go in the numerator. And we know that in one mile, there are 5,280 feet in one mile. Well, what's the order of magnitude on that? Well, 5,280 lies between 10 to the third, 1,000, and 10 to the fourth, which is 10,000. And 5,280 is less than the halfway cutoff point of 5,500. So the order of magnitude for how many feet are in a mile is 10 to the third. So we substitute 10 to the third in for the order of magnitude of feet in a mile. And you can see what would happen here. Only one of the feet in the numerator of the the second dimensional analysis calculation there would be canceled. So what we need to do is cube that quantity. That, of course, would give us cubic feet, cubic miles. One cubed is one. 
And we got to take 10 to the third cubed in order to do that. I believe we're all set. So 10 to the or cubic feet crosses out cubic feet there. And we have our population of the Earth converted to cubic miles. This is easy. Now all we have to do is a power of 10 calculation. So we have 10 to the 10 times 10 to the first over 10 to the third cubed, which would be 10 to the ninth. That would be 10 to the 11th divided by 10 to the 9th. 11 minus 9 is 10 to the 2nd. 10, 10 to the 2nd cubic miles. And there we go. There's your first Fermi question completed. Okay. A point to make here is that um, even if you struggle, say, with the volume of one person and you would say, no, I think it's closer to 10 to the zero. Note that in your estimation in the end that you only end up one power of 10 off from what would be deemed an acceptable answer there. And there really is no right and wrong, but there is a ballpark with which we would say your answer is acceptable. So if you did, my point is, so even if you did the estimation of volume of one person off by one power of 10, and you did the rest accurately, according to the information, then you're only one power of 10 off of, um, you know, what somebody else might deem as the acceptable answer. And that, that would, of course, would be okay. All right? This is going to bother some of you who like to live in a black and white world where everything has to be right and wrong. All right, let's go on to number two. How many sheets of notebook paper would it take to cover I-75 from Cincinnati, Ohio to Tampa, Florida, excluding the off-ramps? All right, so how many sheets of notebook paper would it take to cover I-75? I-75 is an interstate. We have one pictured here. And it, that is actually I-75 as it's headed towards Tampa in Florida. And uh, this appears, if they want how many sheets of notebook paper, this is an area calculation. So they want to take the area of the interstate from Cincinnati to Tampa and cover it with notebook paper. And how many sheets of notebook paper would that take? And this is very important information here. So let's start off with one paper. What's the area of one paper? What's the order of magnitude for a piece of paper? Well, it would be closest to one foot by one foot. And so the order of magnitude for that would, of course, be uh, one, which is 10 to the zero. So one paper is 10 to the zero square feet, or one square foot. Same thing, okay? Now, let's convert that. Uh, let's do the conversion between feet and miles because we're probably going to express the distance from Cincinnati to Tampa in miles. So we need to convert feet to miles. And we did that in the previous question with our 5,280 feet in one mile. We know that there are 10 to the third feet in one mile gets rid of the square there okay now how many uh, miles from Cincinnati to Florida so we're gonna want miles in the numerator to cancel out and we'll just call it all right one trip between Cincinnati and, uh, and uh, Tampa, Florida. So what, what do you think that would be in, as an order of magnitude? This is the beauty of it. Is it 100 miles from Cincinnati to Tampa? No. 1,000 miles from Cincinnati to Tampa. Well, maybe close to that. Maybe you're not sure. Go to the next power of 10. What about 10,000 miles? 
from Cincinnati to Tampa. See how using common sense, we know it's not 100. We know there's no way it can be 10,000. So you quickly settle on the order of magnitude from the number of miles between Cincinnati and Tampa to be 10 to the third. That cancels out our miles unit. We do have one more fact to take into consideration here, and that is uh, we've got the length from Cincinnati to Tampa, but what about the width? We need an area calculation here. So if we take a look at this picture, and again, just implore some common sense here, and even if we take into account, okay, the distance is from here to here, and we've got two of those, you know, another set of those lanes on the other side. Is that 10 feet? Too small. 100 feet. Well, that sounds like it could be in the ballpark. How about 1,000 feet? Would it be 1,000 feet from one side of the interstate to the other? And that seems too big. So we quickly come to the conclusion, oh, that's closest to 100 feet. So 10 to the second feet, okay? And what this does, of course, is it cancels out the other foot measurement from the beginning. <clears throat> and now we can go ahead and do our uh, power of 10 calculation. We in the numerator, we have 10 to the third times 10 to the third times 10 to the second. In the denominator, we have 1, 1, and 1, 10 to the 0. So, 10 to the third times 10 to the third times 10 to the second, 3 plus 3 plus 2, 6 and 8, 10 to the eighth. Sheets of paper per trip from Cincinnati to Florida to cover the interstate. And that'll do it for the first two Fermi questions that you've been assigned. More practice with this um, in class when we'll do questions three through five. Just going to point out to you that these questions are supposed to be done quickly. That's the, that's the purpose of it, is to use powers of 10 to do estimations that you can quickly get answers to. This is not something that should be terribly uh, drawn out and uh, take a long time to do. All right? So I look forward to uh, you experiencing numbers three, four, and five in class together.